Yes. I started okay, recording. Great. No, it's in, in the, the parking lot. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, great. So uh, this is a, uh, I put this on the calendar because I have gotten some feedback from various folks that this might be a good time to have a strategic conversation. Um, and uh, it's, it's a place to, I think, discuss ideas about kind of where our project's going. I feel like we covered some of this yesterday in terms of like having a real refocusing on the user and documentation. Um, but uh, this is a time for us to discuss what are some, I was calling them strategic activities, um, but also kind of what is our strategic project direction. Um, and so I'm going to try to like put out some prompting questions and see if that can stimulate some discussion. And then if the discussion wraps up, um, that's fine. If you have a particular specific idea that you think the, the group should consider and our project should consider undertaking, share that too. Um, so uh, one of the things that I've been asking myself is, for example, just to get us started is, you know, what's, what's the most strategic activity? for us to spend our time on? Um, is it is it acquiring, you know, having Pulp serve new users, for instance? Or is it more about helping existing users deepen their usage of Pulp? Or maybe just to put a third one out there, is it trying to have users who use a particular plugin want to use other plugins. We're not selling software here, but that's kind of the equivalent of like a cross sell. Um, you know, like you're already using RPM. Hey, have you considered using Maven or containers? Um, what do you all think about, about this? Like which one of these is the best uh, return on our time investment, would you say? Um, I think if the goal is new users, there are two potential customers. There are people who do not know about this whole artifact storage business or that there are software out there that manages the whole complexities. And maybe what they're doing now is just like, a proxy of caching. And then there are people who do know about it and have chosen other proprietary software like Nexus Artifactory. Um, and so probably the easier route is to promote or try to appease the second group who already understand the proposition of the software and maybe they just want a better value. Um, and so in that case, you would want to show that we do everything that their software already does, but we're open source, we're free to use, and then we would have to invest some time into getting resources to show this is how you move over from your existing user, from your existing Nexus or whatever project you're using over to Pulp. Here's how you set it up. And everything should be all fine dandy. I think that would probably be a better path to take if, we, if our goal is to try to get new users. Can I just chime in as an existing user? Please. Yes. So uh, to me, I think that spending more time on new users is probably better because at least as an existing user i've been happy using pulp i feel like it's been a stable experience so i don't know like i saw one of the suggestions was spending more time on testing i don't know that that's necessarily helpful because i feel like the stability is good there are some maybe mis missing features or tweaks that i'd like um but for the most part we've been able to work around those so definitely in my mind at least i would spend more time on new users
oh yeah i kind of didn't say the first part of my answer but yet acquiring new users is the one that i thought was more important yeah um i also agree that we the people that do use pulp um tend to be pretty happy um these days and so yeah i think making it easier to become a pulp user should be a goal yeah i think we have a good potential for a new user base the caveat we're struggling with is to remove all the roadblocks for those users to switch to pulp and those roadblocks usually consist in whether absent content type like plugin support or a set of features which we miss or which we have but it's basic support and they want more advanced workflow but basically those potential new users in the wild are not on pulp yet because there are some gaps between their current solution and our solution I don't think the problem is in the migration itself from existing solution to the pulp one, but for us to fulfill those gaps. Yeah, I, I agree that there are potentially gaps and it might be worth looking at other systems like, um, what was the frog one? Artifact. 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 Yeah, and seeing how pulp stacks up against that. And just a quick FYI, I mentioned this in the chat, but we've got um, requests for other content types like Alpine and Conda and stuff like that. That might be a way to acquire new users. So. At a conference, I've been talking to users who currently use, for example, Artifactory. They would be glad to switch to Pulp, but out of, I don't know, five plugins they use at Artifactory, we, for example, support just free. And so they're waiting for another two plugins we add the support for. Or some specific feature workflow we do not support, but our competitor, for example, supports. So definitely investing time and figuring out what's around us might be worth. Yeah, and I, I feel like we're um, getting into a really interesting part of the conversation. Um, I think if I'm hearing the group right, you know, there's an open question. Are, are more, is more content types what's holding the project's growth back in terms of creating value? Or is it, um, or is it that we're kind of lacking in converting um, users of other softwares into using pulp um, to, because of, you know, gaps in documentation and conversion guides and, and things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's probably both. <laughs> um, Another thought which I had is we have different feature set from what's available on the market, but we as developers who write developers docs in which we have a bit of mess as we have discussed previously, could use from could use some better, I don't know, blog writing, marketing and advertisement to deliver the message, how to use those features. Like we have plenty full of great features and I feel like we could do a better job explaining to the world how they can be used in proper words, you know. I agree. Yes, like very often, I don't know, two people invent the same stuff, but because one person has better presentation skills um the way he presents it 
he wins that, you know. Yeah, along with that, I also wonder, like, are there people that just don't know about pulp? Like, maybe they go with Artifactory because they just don't know about pulp. Like, the message isn't getting out there as well. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, Art Artifactory advertises like crazy. Like, I get yeah. advertised Artifactory all the time. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this is a like my corollary to Daniel's point in chat, which is like, I mean, I'm also plus one to setting realistic expectations, but, you know, Daniel says, hey, there's 1,300 employees at Artifactory. Let's be realistic if we're going to actually contemplate competing against something like that. Um, I guess I would say the corollary is, Artifactory spends an incredible amount of money on advertising and marketing. Um, and I'm way less concerned about a gap in people than I am about a gap in marketing. Um, Kieran? Kieran? Right. Um, I was going to ask, like, how does this even work? So do does a open source project like Pulp have its own marketing? I mean, if one wanted to, like, like it does sound like marketing is one of the key ingredients. If you really wanted to go out and find uh, new users, you wouldn't you wouldn't need more developers or more features, or you you would need more you would need full time marketing employees doing it. And is that even something that Pulp can have? I mean, we do some marketing, right? We go to some conferences. That's a little bit of marketing. Um, but the marketing that I really want to see us do is just <clears throat> with the web properties that we have. Just make it, I don't know, make our website better make our documentation better. <laughs> um, that's the marketing that I know we can contribute to. Um, I don't think anybody's gonna be going to buy Google AdWords for us. I feel like blog posts are very useful because in the blog post, you usually outline hands-on experience, real use case, real problem statement of how you can solve it. Right, yeah, and like I feel like with the docs, we just need like some. Yeah. Well, we, we start fresh. Uni <laughs> yeah, like like yeah, the unified docs approach is yeah, it might even make sense to start fresh, honestly. Like, and come up with yeah. some like overall design pattern, like, uh, you know, uh, quick start, full, full and in full instructions, and oh, oh, extra scenarios, you know, stuff like that, like because. Um, I want to just quickly recap my understanding of my employer's interests, um, working at Red Hat, uh, the part of the, I actually more than part of, um, the open source way that Red Hat does business with is to, um, be involved in open source communities. Now, in this case, Pulp was one that was started at Red Hat, but I think it, the strategy it plays across the board um, to be uh, a meaningful contributor to open source communities so that um, the highest quality software can be made directly with users. It's the highest quality because it's, uh, it's the most well tested. It's the most broadly used um, and it's built directly with the users who use it. Um, and that in turn creates great products. So uh, that are built from putting together those open source components. Um, and so uh, for a while, so I, I guess for me, like when I think about how our employers or how my employer wants me to spend time, I mean, part of it is making sure that specific features get done that are valuable um, in terms of the products that that 
commercialized pulp. Um, but in a broader sense, I feel like what our employer, what my employer really wants is more users so that we have better, uh, better tested, more reliable software that that has and it but i mean it also has to have great features that are continuing to get better too so i guess i i what i'm saying here is um i think having a project goal of acquiring new users is definitely in line with my employer's expectations um as long as their their needs are also being met um, and what's maybe my network just spread out. Um, but what's, what I think is really hard is, you know, like we're all developers. So what we do is we write code. And I feel like if our goal is, if the strategic project direction is to, to broaden and increase the user base we're going to have to spend our time differently. I think my network's breaking up. Well, I'm hearing you very clearly. Yeah. Interesting. My, my video keeps rebooting. OK, cool. I'm almost finished. So I, I think that, and then I'll go to Deco. Um, I think that what's really hard is, it, like, if, if this is indeed a project direction, I feel like our it's, an, it's aligned with our employer's goals. Um, in a defend in a very defendable way. But what's really hard is that we all write code and we love writing code. You know, are we gonna feel like we love writing blog posts? Are we gonna feel like we love writing documentation? Um, and that's a really hard thing to convert on. And I think that's partly why I feel like discussing it is so important because if left to our own devices, we'll I think we'll just keep writing more features. Deco. Like I, I really want to invite us here to do some sort of mental exercise, you know, like a little of speculation here. Imagine that, you know, like some of us got fired and well, we decided to join some efforts and build a company that gonna, it's not gonna sponsor poop, but we're gonna create a product that uses poop you know, like under the hood. Do we all think like acquiring new users is we're not gonna be like a priority here? Like, I don't think so. Most of us, I believe, like all of us, of course, considers and believes that acquiring new users is some sort of like a high priority thing for us. You know, but as a company, you know, like we have to think something else, like. Delivering poop as the way it is right now, you know, like is a way like to get like to acquire new users, you know, like or are we gonna do like which are the things you know like we're gonna need to do and uh, to acquire those new users, you know, like it's just like put a same up so putting some putting some effort on like documentation, you know, like it's gonna be just like that, you know, like so I, I really want to think uh, and hear from well from the rest of the team you know, like what what do you think we should do if we're not an open source project but if we are a company that uses this open source project as the core foundation of our product what is this product product itself you know like what is the focus of this product you know like are we fucking on developers are we focus you know like Focusing on, well, DevOps staff, DevOps staff, you know, like what are our focus? You know, like I know that poop, you know, like is for manage artifacts, but which is the focus of it? You know, like what, for what we are going to use this? You know, like I believe this is the kind of exercise we need to do. You know, like we I want to acquire users, but which user? The developer, you know, like because like desktop users won't use Google for at least not directly in open. What? 
what yeah. is our audience right now you know like i believe this is gonna define um better you know like gonna format the idea better of where we should put our focus on you know like i believe we should pass this thing of acquiring new users we all want to acquire new users but we just need to understand like what are the things we're gonna need to do you know like to to and acquire those new users like we yeah. have lots of documentation i believe we're gonna of course we need to reach a new level of it but it's not only that we need like more things and i believe all those things must run in parallel you know like to to reach this new level well i think there are probably a couple of types of users um and what i'm hearing is that we need to make sure that we clearly address those users needs on our website in our documentation and that it's clear if you're a developer setting up your ci system um here's how you can use pulp and as part of that ci um or if you're a company trying to deliver software to um end users here's how you can use pulp um or if you just have a bunch of systems that um you're trying to keep up to date here's how you can use Paul. I don't know. This is, I'm just picturing like a little page. Um. Yeah, I think I, a, a while ago, I wrote like a pulp install instructions. Like here's how you update. Here's how you install, you know, here's how you add a new plugin, you know, it was, I mean, that's a retired product now, but still, you know. So I have a, re a reply, but I want to see if other folks have some thoughts on this. Tanya, you had your hand raised. Tanya. Um, I just wanted to mention that, well, first of all, it seems like everyone is talking about new users. So it's kind of there is so far i hear an agreement about like we need we want new users that's just i just want to state things which i which i am hearing uh the other thing i want to mention is uh, mainly i think brian to your comment that um i don't feel like um approaching to get new users meaning not writing code um documentation and some kind of promotion of the project was always a part of what we should have done it's kind of our technical debt um the, the documentation part so we need to catch up with it i believe acquiring new users and we'll need to find a way how but if we're approaching a part of the artifactory market or we try to um interest users in some other way apart from simplifying our documentation we'll definitely a lot of in technical investigation needs to be done for the gaps and uh, writing code will be involved too so just want to a little bit reframe it that i think may, we need to do more uh, uh of it probably like the documentation and stuff and catch up uh, but it's not that it's changing what we are actually doing um yeah that's that was my comment i think that's a very nice balanced way to put it and a much more holistic way to put it i think as usual um well i uh, i'm swinging i'm trying to swing the pendulum way to the other side basically and i, I think this is maybe a, an over course correction um on my part uh, so what you're saying i think sounds good to me can you write that down please uh which of us so Tanya is the key point. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yeah, yes, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, other thoughts? I have a response and I'm still holding mine for more discussion. I think Deco's Deco's hand is up actually. 
Yeah, like I, I just want to share like a little happening that I have yesterday. You know, like, uh, I'm in a, in a group of Brazilian Red Hat folks, you know. And well, they, you know, like one folk just came with a need, you know, like they need to uh, have some sort of a PyPI repository, you know, like um, of the internet, you know, like without network access. And someone just replied, you know, like, okay, that's like, I believe like Nexus can do that. And I just hope, like, I know Nexus can do that, but also we can do that. You know, like it's, and it's not that far, you know, like it's pretty easy to do. You know, like it's not that hard. And like, I know that we have like this way of thinking of like, okay, like poop, like we have poop core and we have like lots of plugins, you know, like, but I believe like in the end, you know, like it's just most like OpenShift, you know, like you can grab all the pieces of, of OpenShift, like lose on, on the internet, you know, like you can have virtualization if you need, you can have operators and you can have all those things. And in the end, you could build yourself like this OpenShift, your own ver version of OpenShift, you know, like, but in the end, what the users want, you know, like is a thing that is easy and easily supportable by someone, you know, we can have this support for that. You know, like, so in the end, like what I'm thinking is we have, we know a lot of things about poop and we know like lots of different recipes, but we need to concentrate them in just one point. You know, like, is there a way we can provide like the best experience possible for poop, you know, like for this first time user, you know, like, and how we could do that, you know, I, I used it to think about this, like poop with like support, uh, different types of, of plugins, you know, but what I really want to see right now, you know, like what I'm trying to see here is, okay, like poop support all those things. You don't want those things, we can trim them down. You know, like, it's not like you can, you can get like a bare poop and then start to install the plugins that we want. No, we just, you know, like the, the first step here is to have all those content type support, you know, like from the start as the full. And then we just, you don't want all those. Okay. We can, we can trim them down. You know, I like, can have a, a very lean solution for you here, but you know, like I believe like the easiest way is just to, okay. Like we can provide all sorts of experiences right here, you know? Yeah. And the goal with yeah. the, all in one container is that, but we're still, I feel like not getting through. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like a lot of the issues all in one container is like people have like, they're, they want to you know connect object storage or they want to you know import certificates. And it's just, it's like, we, we document those two pretty well, but there's, there's all these scenarios that a quick start guide won't cover, you know? I know. And what if you have like all those things by the way, you know, like we generate our own certificates and things like that, you know, like, okay, but now appears a user that wants to put like to use his own certificate. Okay. Then you can branch, you know, like something for that user, you know, but I believe like, it's just yeah. like, I, I was thinking about like, um, that's desktop experience for Linux for the last two decades, you know, like if it, you're all like me, you know, like you've been using graphical interfaces for a couple of times, you know, like for a couple of decades. And at the beginning, like we have this golden era of inter, you know, like of graphical interface. We have like lots of different sorts of configurations and like lots of different files and so on. And then going forward, we reach it like a uh, genome tree, you know, like which basically you don't have options here. Yeah, you know, like most of the things are, you know, like we don't have like the option to activate or deactivate or change this or these or change that, you know, like it's basically like it is done, folks. Is that it? Like if you want to really use it, it's just like this, you know, like we don't have mm -hmm. any sort of like lots of options and different things to choose from. You yeah. Know, like, and yet, like, 
I believe like the user base keep growing, you know, like it's just like I, I had this experience for myself, you know, like for a point in my yeah. life, I just stopped it changing the wallpaper and changing the colors and the icons and you know like lots of things basically use the default and that's it you know like i believe like yeah. maybe maybe you should understand like this poop poop as this you know like okay like yeah. you have a lot of very good defaults to use to if you want to change something okay we you like you can do that but basically you have a very good default to that you know like and maybe maybe you should use our default you know. And yeah, I know it's like example being like changing the web server, you know, it's and then oh, somebody wants to use a different proxy in front of it. It's yeah, I mean, nowadays we aren't giving people choice to web servers. I think that was only with pulp installer, but still. Brian, uh, I wanted to hear from Lubash first. Yeah, so regarding supporting Pulp out of the box, I think that once we say that we support like all of those formats, we should support them equally. So for instance, Pulp Container doesn't support domains. Pulp OS3 doesn't support RPEC. So eventually we've got a couple of plugins that really don't implement basic features that Pulp Core provides. And this is might be also related to the talk Brian had on Tuesday, or when was it when we discussed the usage of domains and the usage of containers and whether there are some relations between them. And I think that we should rather focus on implementing what should be implemented. Like for instance, when we are saying we support domains, it should be supported across all the plugins, not just a couple of them, because it might eventually scare some users away from using Pulp because they will eventually realize that, okay, Pulp container doesn't support domains and we want to use that. So Artifactory supports that and we will run away. So perhaps the goal would be to start really implementing, I don't know, ACS or domains across plugins that do not support that yet. So we will have a broader use case and so on. Does that include PodDep? I'm, I'm hearing you want to help me add domains to PodDep. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> You are hearing wrong. <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that um, we, in order to make a smart decision, we need to think about, we really need to know our user. And, you know, it's unclear, like Lubash, like, for example, it gets unclear on me what to do. On the one hand, not having a homogeneous feature set across the content types we do support is is not great. Uh, it, should, it should be that way. I mean, like, if we were a company, I mean, and we launched a product like this, <laughs> people would be like, what? Um, you know, but also at the same time, like, is that important to like, also as a company, if we really had to make like strong opportunity cost decisions, I think we would spend time super duper understanding our users needs and do domains really matter to a broad base of users? I won't answer that question, but rhetorically, I feel like that you know, until we have a good idea of what that answer is, I think it's difficult for us to make the right choice. Uh, why was it introduced in the first place? It was introduced in the first place because um, stakeholders who do use Pulp in a, in a commercialized setting needed domain isolation for the RPM plugin specifically. Um, that, uh, David. Yeah, 
A great, good point, though, Lubash. I don't want to take away from it. I'm just saying I don't know. I don't have the data to answer it. David. Um, I just want to say that the homogeneous feature set um, across plugins, I think, is a big deal because it's been a pain point for us. Like, I think we wanted to enable auto publish, um, but I think some plugins didn't have that. And it was, I don't think like the Debian plugin has user authentication, if I'm correct, or domains and stuff like that. So, like, that's a non starter for us. So, I just um, been a I agree. I agree. I just want to add that we hear this trend of, uh, I mean, this kind of concern or complaint every single time on every single conference. Okay, so part of part of the um, the idea in terms of outcomes, because this is an interesting discussion, but I mean, we also need to translate this into outcomes. Um, is uh, I don't know when and I don't know who, but at least maybe we can know what what is a strategic activity in this area? And I think doing an assessment of the plugin feature sets in one big table, I think would let us at least get a clear understanding of the scope and breadth of the problem. Yeah, I think like when I look at new features versus filling in the gaps between plugins, like I would definitely prioritize the latter. And I think that's a good approach. And Along with that work, you could also look at documentation across plugins too, because I mean that's some plugins. The documentation is different. There are gaps in documentation for different plugins, so not just features, but I'd say also docs. That's really helpful. I feel like ideologically we started help three as hey, um, everyone works independently, um, and we it's convenient from the development point of view, but it's not convenient and confusing for users. So. Yeah, I think the way we approached Pulp 3 in that mindset was helpful at the time, but we've sort of gotten to the point where Pulp is more of a mature product. Instead of letting plugins do their own thing, it's time to sort of converge, I think. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Um... And, and do that in a way that is reasonable for folks like Kieran. I totally agree, though. Daniel, I've thought about merging all the plugins into one repo almost on a daily basis. On a serious note, guys, I think that um, there is no goal of having like 100% same features across plugin because, you know, it probably won't make sense to some. But sure. the ma majority, like the vast majority, about apart from super duper specifics, um, I think that would be probably very helpful. Um. I want to, if I can, I want to try to share something I've been thinking about, um, and I'll try to make it brief. Um, I really want to get this out before, but at least before we run out of time. If you have something else to share, I've talked a lot. Please raise your hand and, and take it over. Um, so there are. Um, I've been thinking a lot about our users, and I've been thinking. What I've really tried to do is run this thought experiment. I've really tried to put myself in the chair of the user. And I, and for our users here on the call, I appreciate. I want to hear maybe what you think about this. Um, why would I use Pulp for this particular activity? Like we talked a lot about pairing with like CI/CD stuff, or why would I use it for like on-prem, like pull through caching features? Why would I use it for um, geo content distribution, like a like a my my homemade CDN, you know, why would I use it for composing repositories of software that comes from a bunch of different places? You know, these are all kind of like workload or usages that we kind of like casually bump into um, with Pulp. And what I've tried to do is really put myself in the chair of the user for each one of these and think, like, I have no allegiance to Pulp. See, we all have a huge bias here, and I think it gets in our way. So like, let's just set that bias aside. We don't care anything about pulp now. 
why would I use any of those things? And so to do that, what I've done is I've gone on ChatGPT, of course, my friend, and I've asked it, hey, I want to do this workload. Can you recommend me some softwares? And here's what I've learned. Like I can summarize the experiment. Uh, Pulp isn't on that list ever. Okay. But more importantly, there's a long list. Like for instance, like Docker container pull through caching, just as an example, or Py Python pull through caching, mirroring, any of those kinds of things. Um, what you'll see is that there's a lot of stuff that, out there that does it. Like for instance, with container, um, there's Docker mirror as an example. There's another software out there called Harbor. You can use Artifactory. You can use, I mean, I can go look at the list. There's a lot of stuff out there that does it, but what we see, cause we use pulp is like, where we develop pulp, it's like, well, how can we make pulp do this? And so we're like kind of casually competing with a whole bunch of other things. And we may or may not be successful in doing that. Um, and so, so that may sound dismal, but there's some good news in here. Um, there's one section of the usage that I feel like is super unique to pulp. Um, and it has to do with when users need to compose artifact repositories with softwares with specific sets of things that come from a variety of places. This is somewhere that the tooling is, there's just very little out there that competes with pulp. Um, and so are you saying the most tooling out there is very content type specific and yeah. does not provide the overlap? Yeah, like for, uh, for Debian, there's Apply, which is, I think, better than Pulp. But the issue with Apply is that it only man manages Debian packages. So in any one given content type, there's probably a better solution than Pulp. But I think the advantage of Pulp is that it supports multiple different content types. And there are other solutions out there like Artifactory that also support multiple content types, but those solutions are typically not open source. So that's sort of like, I think the niche where Pulp wins is it's open source and it supports multiple content types. Brian, to comment to what you said, what's worse for the solutions you have mentioned, we already support all kinds of things so we don't even need to question ourselves oh what do we need to do to get there to what for example harbor supports because we already do that the problem is again back to the promotion of the project and marketing right and there is one set of user group who will never be able to to reach and probably that's out of our goals like those users who use Artifactory, they're happy with it because there is a paid support. Like I had a discussion with a user who is a apostery on, don't remember the details, but they have, they use Artifactory and they have 99.999 SLAs. And they said like, we would gladly use Pulp, but what happens whenever shit hits the fan? like Artifactory because of the paid support will help us. And I was like, well, that's probably not our area. So this kind of group of users will never be able to reach. And I'm not saying that's our goal. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think there are users who would prefer to have a paid product, but there, I think there are also users that would prefer to have an open source solution. Yeah, the ones who wants to invest into a team of uh, uh, DevOps who are going to be, you know, supporting all this stuff. You know, I, th I think size plays into this. I mean, I, I got to just guess here, but first off, I think great comment, um, you know. Um, but I also want to layer on the concept of size. Um, so if you're a really big enterprise and you have a whole bunch of um, stuff, you know, your cost basis for paying another company to support it for you is going to be really large. And I think at some point, the economics on it tilt in the sense that you would rather pay a team of your own people 
Um, I think I'm talking to another one of those teams around the call. Um, a team of your own people who would like to run it yourselves. But I suspect that, you know, if you look at the marketplace, there's a, the smaller market would super prefer that. Like they're not going to hire a team of people. They just want to like pay a little bit of money to somebody. But then if you add the area up under that curve, it may be as larger than the big market. So I'm not saying that it is necessarily this way, but I feel like size does play into the user um, decision on like whether that's an economically good idea or not. Yeah, I agree. I think one thing we have too is like when you get like the larger, like some of the lar like the larger tech companies, like they have like their own internal tooling, you know. And at that point, the fact that Pulp is so customizable, like we support different load balancers, that starts to become, you know, and that starts to make us we we start to become better at those at supporting those users. Um, we're coming up on to an hour for our time. Um, I've heard that having a ma matrix of what all the plugins support from a feature set perspective and doing like an audit would be useful. Um, I'm not sure what other prep and I, I've heard general agreement that acquiring new users is good. Um, Jared, I think your comment, which kicked us off and we haven't really returned back to is the idea that acquiring users, it's, it's way easier to convince users to switch to pulp when they already understand the value proposition of pulp than it is to, uh, try to convince total net new unaddressed market users that they need something like pulp. I think it's just way easier to convert people from things like Nexus artifactory, et cetera. And um, we haven't returned to that point, but I think that was a very astute observation. Um, are there any other things that you wanted out of this call other than an interesting discussion about our users and maybe a few of these um, activities that we can do at some later time? I also heard an interest in, in value and homogeneity of our feature set over new content type support. Mm, maybe new features, because I also heard some desire for new content types. Am I right, David? Yeah, we've talked about it. So I don't know that we have a need right now, but we've got a request for things like Honda and what else, Alpine, so. Yeah, yeah. Brian, it's also potentially a part of uh, activities to acquire new users or encourage users to move to pulp. New content types. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I guess what I keep trying to get to, though, is I, mean, I totally agree. Um, and what I keep trying to get us to as a project is we need to be really intentional about our time because I feel like when we do a little bit of new content type, do a little bit of feature work, you know, the sums don't add up to the impact we could have if we had like a, like a formal strategy where we're really gonna like go after this one thing. Yeah, I agree. I just feel that we're, we're like brainstorming ideas. We haven't decided on any strategy, but I agree with, with the point. Uh, potentially other, I think thing which I hear is, uh, which we discussed in the past, probably overall simplification from a user point of view. Um, whether it's a deployment or docs or getting started or um, similar functionality for uh, plugins, it all kind of goes also into the simplification bucket. Okay, so the plan is now to create the metrics of supported features and what will we do next? We will not support them again. 
for another month for you. Um, I think the plan is to make the matrix and then to try to figure out where our best opportunity is to close it. Identify low hanging fruit, right? Yeah. I mean, we get like saying we're going to fill every single box, no matter what is probably not something we can do in a reasonable timeline. So yeah, I think the low hanging fruit strategy is, is the easy. It's like, Hey, how could we quickly pick up? you know, 60% of the unfilled boxes. And are we able to prioritize that work amongst the other work that our paid employers are requiring us to prioritize? Um, which just to be clear, the plan is that we're all gonna continue delivering the value that our paid employers pay us for full time. Um, so like we gotta find ways to um, increase the project's upstream value in the additional time that we have around those like core core things. Does that how does does that um, that's what I imagined? I don't know if that's similar or different to what others imagined. I mean, for some features, there really are synergies, right? If you if you implement it for one plugin, it's probably really quick to implement it for another plugin as well. Whereas if somebody else on the other plugin team who's never looked at this feature tries to implement it for that plugin, it takes longer. So like having that matrix and identifying the low hanging fruit does make sense in that way. Like where can one, maybe there are some places where one can see like, oh, we have this gap here and we already have somebody who knows how to fill that gap because they did it for the other plugin. And the matrix is hugely useful for our users. Like right now, it's, they have no idea what they're getting. I don't yeah. even have any idea what we're getting. The fact that we don't even know what the matrix is, right, is yep. yeah. I mean, even if we never even moved a single cell on it. I, it would I, saw, people. I saw some user post a couple issues on Pulp Dev that were quite nasty about Pulp Dev not having some features that Pulp RPM had, if I recall correctly. Well, there were, yeah, there were a couple of issues that were basically like, this is like this in Pulp RPM, therefore bug that it's not like this in Pulp Dev. And I guess, I mean, that's ultimately, we're not going to be that way, right? There will be differences. Yeah, I think that's where having a table would help. Like the user can see, oh, this feature is not in this plugin. Setting the proper expectations. Yeah. So yeah, that is a case of expectations management because it's like that's not something Pulp currently can achieve. Uh, but then it's good to communicate that. Well, I also think imp I agree completely. And implicit in the example that David's calling out is that there's a user expectation for homogeneity across plugins. To the point where the ecosystem of each plugin allows it and where it makes sense to have those homogeneous capabilities, right? And I think yes. Uh, but what I hear guys are talking right now, at least we should start with setting expectations, right? <laughs> and then if we can improve the homogeneity of it, it even better. Yep. I feel like this is a very achievable goal. Also, like maybe I still add just in the Pulp Debian case, because it is, of course, in some sense, the odd plugin out because there's two of us from the different company working on it. And um, there's some things where I like would pref like I would want Pulp Deb to be homogenous with say pulp rpm which is the most the most similar one right because it's also a package just like distro packages um but i don't have the time to do it 
And then there's other things where I like, yeah, this is just going to be different because apt is different. And I, I'm not interested in being like pulp RPM in this feature. And but that's not necessarily like users don't necessarily see that. So for them, it's just why is this thing not like pulp RPM? And it could they could ask that question about either case. So in some cases, like my answer would be, yeah, I wish it was like pulp RPM. And maybe one day we find the time to do it. And sometimes my answer is like, nah, I, I'm not interested in that. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just to quote a former pulp team member, the one and only Randy Barlow, uh, when he would be receiving these sorts of nasty, like, why doesn't your plugin do this requests? He would always respond with this quote saying, it's not fixed or implemented because you haven't implemented it yet, um, is what he would always tell them, which is a little snarky, but also it's the way of open source. Um, like, you know, it's a free software that you've paid nothing for. Um, it is not a product. So to walk in and be real demanding is probably not a great way to think about it. Um, and so I guess like, let's not forget that also user contribution is a way that this matrix can be filled as well. And like, we'll do our best, but ultimately if someone someone's priorities are not aligned with a developer's priorities like pulp dev, then you know they can they can work on that too. I think that's reasonable. I'm channeling my inner Randy. That's always my um, hope for the UI that we will advertise. Um, they will be we'll get enough users so they will be the one who would be interested to add UI to it. <laughs> Just since you're talking UI, um, <laughs> I agree that that is a hope. Sure, sure. That's my hope too. I don't think that's realistically going to happen. I feel like we, um, the fund, the funded developer portion of, of the project, whether that's, you know, any of the companies would need to seed something and then have it. And then marginal contribution can happen on top of that. Um, if only we had some students who could make a UI for us. If, <laughs> Yeah. We've had several, it's interesting. I mean, like we've had several UIs started and um, I think it speaks to the actual difficulty of, of going the distance on it. I, I do always have this thought that if you could place pulp at certain university like faculties, it's like it's just the right kind of environment, right? You could write endless bachelor thesis, adding a new content type or doing this or that with pulp. It's it's the right kind of place where people like have time to imp to work on an open source project for a while and then they move on to something else or I don't know. But I have no idea how one would do it. One would need like a marketing department to actually try and find university faculties that have some kind of need for anything like this and then talk to them and convince them to put time into it yeah i don't know so <laughs> I, don't do that. I, I i unfortunately know all too well how this works because i used to work at a university which ran these kinds of projects for stuff and what happens is behind the scenes the company is paying the university money and That is, I think, what it takes. Like, for instance, at NC State, if you want to sponsor a senior design project, you have to pay them like seven thousand dollars. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe try and find a European university. They don't work that. Way. <laughs> they don't. Have, they don't have any money. <laughs> they don't get money. Um, they, they, they just. You need to find the right person who wants to. Yeah. Well, uh, Kieran, do you remember our friends from the conferences from university who use pulp? <laughs> yeah, they want they want domain and pulp dev, I think. 
yeah but what i <laughs> but what i mean is like they are still in part two <laughs> right uh i mean quick quick call out if we're talking students and and stuff like that i still think the google summer of code is where it's at i would like us to do that um the i'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing it again um and we need to have a very concrete project built for them to do. Well, that's a good idea. We can, we can maybe write it down. Let's see if we have capacity for it. I, whenever I paused them, I met someone. Um, I actually went to a meetup for uh, Google Summer Code. And basically, we have a referral if we want to submit a project we have somebody who is willing to be our reference for google um so, yeah, which i think you need if i remember correctly yeah yeah you do yep and this person is the person that is behind the project that with that pearls the urls the package urls and has a database of all the packages So anyway. I think we got a, a few, I at least have to take a break. I should speak for myself. Yep, we should take a break. Um, yeah, so let me stop the recording. Mm -hmm.